Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. We have a beautiful video for you. This one may be short. You know, I always say things are going to be short and sometimes be a little longer, but I think this one's going to be short but sweet. How all the videos is prophecies got to be known, and we want you to know it. And also, I thank a shout out for Trinidad, shout out for Africa on that uh, Wednesday uh, program that Sister Corinthia have. Individuals was coming, and we want more of you guys. We want New York, huh? New York, New York, <laughs> and stuff like that. We want more of you coming now. We need you to see. Look on that last video that we put on the air. We're gonna talk about it at the end. What time to come on the air on Wednesday? I think 7:30. Come on the air so you could listen to that, and you're gonna also hear me on there as a guest. So I need you guys to get on there now. We will need all you possibly can Wednesday afternoon at 7 of uh, this time your Eastern Standard Time 7 at night in the evening need you to get on there and so I could hear your voice because I want to talk to you I want you to ask me questions things on your mind you ask me questions and also she got a teaching on there that you need so that's very important but tonight today's lesson is I have seen God face to face I have seen God face to face now, when you talk about God, we talk about when talking about Allah, the source, that's different. But when you're talking about the Lord God thought, the Lord God thought is the Lord God thought. Now, when you see the Lord God thought, and when you see him face to face, you gotta understand something, and you're gonna see where it's taken from. It's Genesis 30, 32. Genesis 32, 30. And Jacob, and Jacob called the name of the place Pania. 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 For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now, you're going to see, God going to present himself in, his, in a vision or dream to you, if you see thought. Now, when you see him and he got a message for you, you're going to see him, when you see him face to face, and it's talking about Joseph and the Son of Man. It's really about the Son of Man because you have to see it now so you'll know what it's talking about. I'm going I'm to say this. I have seen God face to face. 1970s in the 70s to 2023. It's the 70s when I seen thought face to face. Now people say you can't see God face and live. No, face to face don't mean if I'm standing in front of you and I'm looking at what you're doing. I don't necessarily have to be looking in your face to see what you're doing and I'm in front of you. And this is how He will fix it. God will fix it when it's time for you. If, when he presents himself to you, if, uh, if he presents himself to you like that, he's gonna come to you, and you're not gonna you're gonna see his hind side. You're gonna see his hind side. You're gonna see this part of him, okay? And if you get in front of him, he's gonna fix it. Where what he bringing himself to you to tell you, you're gonna have your mind on that which he brought the Holy Bible, which was thicker than it. It was. A normal Bible, and I was looking at his hand, brrr, turning them pages like a genius, and he talked to me telepathically. I want you to be just like us. So I never seen him this part of, but I was right in front of him, face to face, looking at what he was doing. So when you understand that, you will see that he's not talking about your eyes looking in his eyes, okay? It's talking about you in the presence of God. And you and, and God, when you see this part where it got the uh, bird and etc., those are masks. I seen him as a man, as a man with a priestly attire on. Okay, so when you see, know that, and you read this, you already know what they're talking about. That you already know what they're talking about. So you know you see this man, and you know that you are in the image of this man, an image of God. That's when you know for surety that you are God's. Now, God always uses the term son of man himself as a son of man. What is a God? God is a nether. Thought is known as the uh, nether of the nethers, the God of the gods. See, the Europeans use the word God because they had no, no understanding of nether no more than calling him a God. So when you, if you see somebody that come from the golden age down to the I'll say down to the uh, dark age or the bronze age, 
They're like they're gonna present, they're gonna come to you, and you're gonna see them, and you're gonna think of them as gods because of the level of knowledge and what they could do. They could do extraordinary things. And when you see people do extraordinary things like that, you take it to be a god. And that's our view of God. That's a Eucentric word, God. Our, our Hebrew word is a netta. It's a netta. And we have to understand that. Now, in, in the Bible, you're going to see the word God. But you got to understand that that, that word God means netta. A, a person with high level of, of, of intuitive, a high level vibration. They are operating in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth dimension or whatever more than that. But I know he came from way up and came down in this dimension and had that conversation with me and said, I want you to be just like us. And he was in priestly attire and he had the Holy Bible in his hand, but thicker than our regular Bible. And I, I bring that to you. That's my testimony to that. And this is why you hear me bringing stuff that you never heard before. You never heard any minister bring this knowledge to this level. Any professor bring this knowledge to this level. Any people of the sacred art bring the knowledge to this level because this is a spiritual guide. And a spiritual guide operate on a high level consciousness. So if you're in a third, fourth dimension and somebody operating on a fifth, sixth, seventh dimension, that knowledge that they bring is going to be way greater than anything you ever heard before on this lower dimension. And you got to understand that. Now, Genesis uh, 32, 30. And Jacob, who is, it's talking about Jacob, which the Bible was sent to America, so it's talking about our time. Who is Jacob? Jacob is Israel. You know he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And Israel is a code name for Louis A. So we have to understand that. Now he say, and Jacob, which is a prince, okay? Jacob called the name of the place Pinea. Okay, that's mean the pioneer gland. Cause this is where you this is why we keep talking about how important and those are videos that Marcel have on this on there in that list of three hundred and probably thirteen or more videos, you need to go in there and look about that food. You need to know how to eat properly. You need to be able to clear that pioneer gland. Because this is where you're going to see things. This is where your intuition comes from. This is where your knowledge comes from. All that that you need to reach God, to know more about God and more about yourself. That's where the high level vibration, the high level intelligence. See, they feed you, try to destroy that and keep you from being able to activate that. Okay, that's the seed of God, where the seed of God is in there. See, your divine is in you. The divine presence of God is in you. You don't see God outside. You see God inside, up in here, in your mind. That's why they call this, this thought. Because when you think a thought, you have thoughts, that means that you, you're connected to your higher self when you use your thought. Now, you can use your thoughts good or you can use them bad. We'll talk about that at a different time. Now, let's get into that. Uh, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Okay, verse 29. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go 30, 29, and 28. I'm going to go in that way because I need you to see this a certain way. Okay, verse 29. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore it is thought. You're going to see that. But that is there because you need an issue to interpret it so you know that this is thought. For that is, me mean, for it is, now if they say it is that, you know that ain't no name. So you know yourself, that ain't no name. And you vibrating at a high level of consciousness, you know that ain't no name. But you put thought there, you know thought is the name. Because you know Machazadeh and thought is the same person, okay? For there, for is it thought that does ask after my name. And, and he bless him there, okay? And he bless him there. That means the divine. See, when, when you got to that level where you're knowing this information, then you're operating with the divine. You've been learning stuff so you can operate with the divine. The divine is inside you. So that divine person inside you is what you what has got you gravitating to this kind of teaching and this learning. Your divine inside you, because if you didn't have that divine inside you, you will rebel, you will come against certain things being taught to you. 
But that divine is in you. You are elect, and that divine is in you got you, got you stimulated, vibrating at a certain level of consciousness, and you you eating this. You saying, no man, this is something about this. This is this, this is I know I'm something. See, because you didn't just start knowing about yourself when you heard me teach. You knew it from a childhood, but you didn't understand it. See, a lot of times we know we different, but we don't know how different and how to understand it. Because the world keeps bombarding us with all this negativeness and this and that. Oh, you just this or you just that. No, 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 no. You are gods. You are gods. And you got divine in you. So don't let nobody try to rob the divine in you. See, that's how they try to rule over you like they do. Because they don't want you to know who you really are. No, no, no. Ain't nobody out there no greater than you. We are all one with God. One consciousness. Although we are individuals. We are divine individuals. And especially at this time, I keep telling y'all from, from uh, 1915, 1954 uh, and stuff like that. This way, oh man, the gods, the gods come to the planet. So you ain't gonna do the things and you ain't gonna accept the thing that some of the others would have accepted, mean had accepted. You're not gonna do that, okay? And your children and your children, children out there, you and all that, they're gonna be vibrating at a high level of consciousness that some of this nonsense that we've been dealing with coming out of this paradigm shift, they ain't gonna, it ain't gonna even phase them. Cause they ain't gonna, you tell them a lie, they look at you like you crazy. Cause these kids gonna go from being able to talk language wise to telepathic. That telepathic is going to come. And it's going to come gradually, but it's coming. It's going to come gradually. That's why some people say, you call, some people call you, man, I was just thinking about you. Uh, something will happen, oh, I know you said a certain thing. Man, how you know that? I'm just saying that. I was just saying that in my mind. But that person know it all before you even say it. Because that telepathic is kicking in now. And you got to understand that. In the near future, we're gonna, all going to be telepathic. The lie is going to be under cease because somebody come lying to you, you already know what's in their mind. You ain't going to say, come on, man, you know that ain't what you had in your mind. I know you. Come on now, we're all going into this telepathic now. Come on, wake up. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's move on. 29, 29. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it thought thou does ask after my name? Okay? And he blessed him there. Now, he blessed him there. Now, where was Jacob uh, communicating with him? What was Israel communicating with him? In here, in the, the divine. He began to understand how to connect himself with God, his creator. And you have to see this. Verse, uh, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thy power with God and with man and has prevailed. Now notice this. As a prince. Now you got to understand Jacob. Jacob which is Israel. As a prince telling him a bloodline. Now why is he a bloodline? Because Jacob is part of the Abrahamic bloodline. Okay. Uh, we use the term Abraham but we should say the royal bloodline from God. That's connected with thought. You remember Abraham? Uh, was blessed by uh, Melchizedek. Okay, he got his blessings from God from Melchizedek. He paid Melchizedek tidings and stuff. Uh, I think it was a tenth of tithing, etc. His connection with God was Melchizedek. Okay, our connection with God in this near future and now is to be Melchizedek, which is known as the Lord God thought, because the Lord God thought is going to bring the blessings necessary for us to move to that next level. Thought is the one to come. He's a savior. Okay, he is the savior. Thought is the one to come and get you out of certain condition. Thought is the one to get you from the bondage of the affliction to the liberation. And you must understand that. Thought is Melchizedek. And we have to understand what's really going on in this Bible. And what God wants you to know. Let's do with verse 29. And he blessed him there. He blessed him there. Okay. Now, when we see this, you're going to be blessed. Why? Because God is trying to bring you into that. That's why he have Israel on the scene now. See, this whole thing that King James 
brought on the scene, brought to you. He brought it by the alchemists. These 54 men was alchemists. They understand Latin, Greek, and many other languages, but they was like the Nostradamus type individuals. They could pierce into the future and see your time. And this is what the writing of that Old and New Testament was about. It was about you, your connection with your fathers, your connection with Abraham, your connection with, with, with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. It was your connections there. And it, it was about this time with your connections there. And you have to see this. Now, I want to bring out something that dealing with the doctrine and covenant. See, the Mormons, they up in Utah and stuff like that from Joseph Smith time, the 1830s and things like that. You have, you have to know the movement. There's a movement in America, the evangelistic movement in America at that time. You had the Miller Rights and you had many others at that time, you know. And which came the Seven Day Adventist and the Jehovah Witness, and you had that that religious revival type movement coming at that time. And what came? Joseph Smith came on the scene, and Joseph Smith. You got to know what Joseph Smith as well. Joseph Smith was part of the Masonic Order. Okay, he was part of the and the Millerites as well. The Millerites was as well. Read the history of these people so you know more about them. But Joseph Smith had is in the Bible. And the reason I'm bringing Joseph Smith out because he's a, a biblical character as well. And you got to see that. He's a biblical character as well. So just like Donald Trump is a biblical character, just like uh, uh, Barack Obama is a biblical character, just like many other individuals. Uh, Bush is in the Bible. Now, just because you're in the Bible don't mean you, is, you in a good light in the Bible, it means that you're there. And I'm, I'm gonna show you Joseph Smith in there because he's shown in a good light. And when you look at the Mormon church now, and and, uh, and Joseph Smith came in the 1800s, don't mean that just cause he was, he helped started the Mormon church, don't mean the Mormon church is all, all goody, goody, good shoe right now, okay? Because after they, uh, assassinated Joseph Smith, killed Joseph Smith, then Brigham Young them took over and it split between Joseph Smith family and another group. And you got to remember that. And once that split happened and this stuff started turning the way it is, then you, you see a whole different thing. Because the Mormon church right now pushed that, that you century Jesus and all this other stuff. Now they said that Joseph Smith seen uh, the father and the son. They say the father and the son, okay? But who is the father and the son? Was it Jesus or was it thought? See, when thought come, he come in two. Okay, he come in two. And you got to remember that he come in two. And they two look alike. I seen it. Okay. So I seen it. So I know what time it is. Okay. And that's why when I was connected with the Mormon church for a brief period of time, they was interested in my testimony because I never, I never deviated from what I seen. I seen two. Joseph Smith seen two, I seen two, okay? Just like that, but they look just alike. But one came and spoke to me and the other one deviated, okay? He deviated before he, the other one, the first, the one that brought the book to me. So I want you to know that so you know what's up. And I, and I know without a shadow of a doubt that Joseph Smith, when they talk about the vision, he seen thought. He didn't see what they say, God, God the source. Because God the source, you don't see God the source, okay? And Jesus was not God. So you ain't seen no Jesus unless you've seen the Son of Man of the future, but not, you know. And I don't want to go so deep in that. I ain't here to beat on them, but I want to bring something to your attention because I want to show you something that Joseph Smith, uh, them wrote. And you need to know about that because it's dealing with our time. In the Doctrine and Covenant, called Doctrine and Covenant, Pearl of Great Price, a book that they have. In the Doctrine and Covenant, okay, you've got section, section 113, okay, an uh, answer to certain questions of the right, I mean, on the writing of Isaiah, give, given by Joseph Smith, the prophet, March 18, 1838. I want you to see that now. But I want to get to our people before I go into that. I want to talk about our people for a brief moment before I get into that. Calvin Church, Calvin Church. Also, we want to look at Calvin Church and his wife in this church. I want to know that because I, Calvin Church, I, uh, I'm wondering what's going on now. Let me know what's going on because I ain't heard from you for a while. 
And anytime I haven't heard from a person for a little while, I'm concerned. Okay. So Calvin Church, I thank God for him being here and helping out with this organization, etc. Okay. Uh, the Lois uh, Rivers, the Lois Rivers, I haven't heard from her for a little while. So I want to be able to let these individuals know that I am concerned. When, when you be connected to me, I am concerned. Because some people could be sick, could be that. It could be just et cetera, et cetera. So I want to know how you're doing. Get in touch with me. Let me know. Because I'm that type of minister. I, ain't, I'm, I want to know how you're doing. Okay. Now, also, Adrian H. Herman. Herman. See, I put y'all names up front, okay, because I want, when I want to know something about you, I'm putting you up front, okay? You're going to be up front, on Front Street, okay? Now, also, we got Kathleen McCoy, okay? Now, these four individuals, I want to know. Get in touch with me and let me know what's going on. Now, also, we got Theodore, Theodore White, uh, Eldrin Janeiro, Joyce and Robert Cromwell, we got Maceo Gordon, we got Joseph Hedges, uh, Charles W. Lindsay, Miss Shirley Oliver, Stephen J. Coleman, Tamir C. Fennell, Leon James, and Ruby Jean uh, McKee. Okay, we got these individuals, and I thank God for all these individuals because these individuals have been faithful to this organization, and we love them. And we want to be in all these, these, these over here was always been there. So I had to fill the void with individuals always been, always been here. But I wanted these individuals, these four, one, uh, one, two, three, uh, four. I wanted them to be up front. So we'll, they'll know that we're concerned about them. These are our people. And we all must understand we need our people's clothes. Okay, because we are a family. Now, and they are the elect. Now, Section in this Doctrine and Covenant dealing with the uh, book, of, the uh, book of the Mormon uh, that include part of the Mormons. See, the Mormons have have what they call. I think I got the book somewhere behind. Me. Anyway, the Mormons have the the Holy Bible, the Old and New Testament. They have the Doctrine and Covenant, Pearl of Great Price, and they have the Book of Mormon. Now, if somebody say, "Well, oh, let me show." You. This is an old one that I had from way back when. And they are all combined into this one book, okay? The Holy Bible, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenant, uh, and the Pearl of Great Price. They have all these books, so this is what they, they study out of, all this together. Now, the people say, is all that right or correct, everything? I don't want to get in that today, but that's what they have. Okay, now we're going to go on because it's a prophecy that I want you to see that's involved in the teaching that deal with our time right now. And this is why I'm bringing all this out right now. Okay, in section 113.3, question was asked. See, Joseph was known to use the, what they call the Urim and Thurman, okay, an instrument for his work in order to ask God certain questions and to get answers. And this is what what was uh, said. And the Bible is going to bring it out. I'm going to read that part where the Bible bring it out. Him using that particular instrument. Okay. What is the rod spoken of in the first verse of the 11th chapter of Isaiah that shall come of the stem of what me uh, of Isaiah that shall come of the stem of Jesse. And this is what it say in the fourth uh, fourth verse. Okay. Behold, thus said the Lord, it is a servant in the hands of Christ, who is partly a descendant of Jesse as well as of Ephraim, or of the house of Joseph, on whom there is laid much power. Okay? Now, this is talking about our time. It is given an answer, as it say, from God to tell them who is talking about in Isaiah, okay? It's talking about the Messiah, the Prince, okay? Now, at that time, by them uh, uh, looking at Christ, now he was of, of the Masonic order, so he's seen Christ different, but the people, see, sometimes in those orders, they can't come out and tell people everything that they know 
because they're not ready for it. Like it said, you can't you handle ready the truth. The truth. Okay, so you have to see that and understand that. So when they talk about Christ and written, talk about Christ, they the ones of the high order know that you're talking about thought. Okay, they know you're talking about thought, the Savior. Okay, but you got to understand the way that the Eurocentric Christianity bring Christ. They bring Christ as the as the Savior and the Messenger. So you got to know which one they're talking about. The Messenger is the Son of Man. The Messenger is Israel, but the Savior is Thought, who's known as Melchizedek. So you have to carefully understand and listen to our lecture so you can understand that difference. So when they use the term Christ, you got to see where they coming from and what time is they saying that and what audience is, is being talked to at that time. Okay. They say lay much power. What's the power? What how do you get the power? Arts. The arts is the is the glory of thy strength. So your power comes in your art. And this is what? It, it's been laid great power, great arts, knowing the arts, knowing how to wield the arts this way and that way and that way to understand what does say the Lord and understand God's purpose for humanity at this particular time of human history. Okay, five. What? Is, okay. What is the root of justice spoken of in the tenth verse of the eleventh chapter? Okay. Behold, thus said the Lord. It is a descendant of Jesse as well of Joseph unto whom rightly belong the priesthood and the keys of the kingdom for an ensign and for the gathering of my peoples in the last days. That's talking about individual now. Talking about individual now who rightly belong the priesthood. To gather God's elect from the four corners of the earth. That's now. That is Israel. That is Lewis. And you got to see this. But see, as, as organizations come on through time and you have a, a leader, just say like Martin Luther King came on the scene, Marcus God came on the scene, don't matter. Joseph Smith came on the scene. When these people go off the scene, that movement diminish. That movement and that knowledge and keep into that, a lot of times it, 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 they deviate. Okay? Because at Joseph Smith time, I, if I'm not mistaken, instead of a black guy that was next to Joseph Smith in the priesthood, he was black. Okay? Well, so what happened that blacks weren't able to hold the priesthood until a certain time after them for over a hundred and some years? Blacks weren't able to hold the priesthood, and they mostly identified them blacks who wasn't able to hold the priesthood are the ones in America. And the, the, the thought was, or what came to me, the years I was around that organization said uh, that when the blacks began to hold the priesthood, that's the time of the coming of the Son of Man. So what did they do? They knew that the Son of Man was among these black folks in America. They knew that. Many times I have heard them and being in the environment, because I used to teach Sunday school in there. Before I started with thought being to this level, long years ago, okay, I taught at Sunday school in there, I taught at Sunday school in the priesthood, because I was the first, well, that I knew of, the first black Mormon priesthood holder in the state of Florida, in Judah. Because when they, I was looking to understand the priesthood more, because you got to understand, it takes 69 years for this Messiah the Prince to go from birth to the most holy. Okay, so in between this time, he, he he's, he's wondering. In between this time, he's learning different things. The same as the story of Jesus. In between this time, you know, they say the story when he was about 12 years old, he left from his mom and went into the temples and and and. and and, and was talking to the high priest and all that and they understood seeing the wisdom of and stuff like that so these kind of things was happening in my life okay it was happening in my life until a certain time and, and 2016 came no it was time to step out it was time to step out but I was cut off for seven years from being where I need to be at now 2023 uh uh the 20 years, the uh, 60 years is over with now. 
Now it's time for them to take the bands off and let me go. Let me do what I need to do. And don't worry about them doing nothing. God will make it happen. Okay? And they're going to get to that point. But what you got to see is that in this, they knew certain things. Let's go, let's go a little further in this here. Okay? Let's go in Isaiah so you can see Joseph. Joseph Smith. You can see where he at in the scripture. Okay? Isaiah 54, 16 to 17. Behold, I have created the Smith. Okay? Now this is thought talking, thought is talking. I have created the smell that blow the coals and the fire. And thought is talking again. To bring forth an instrument for his work. This is what Joseph Smith was doing. This is how Joseph Smith, this is even how the Mormons connect Joseph Smith with the scripture right here. Okay. But what happened after Joseph Smith? After that time. Now notice what it said. After that. Notice this now. And I have created the waster. Now look at this word waster. I want you to see it very carefully. Because this is that person that is to come after a uh, hundred something years after Joseph Smith. That one, that son of man is to come. Okay? Now, it got waster. Look at this. You see that T? How it curved like that? They go that L. L. E. W, you take this part across that T and you put there I and you and there go your S, your S. Now you got two letters left there. You got the A and the R. Where did A and the R go? Right here. A R. Lewis. A R. Lewis Armstrong. See, but you got to understand this stuff. You got to understand the arts. You got to understand the arts to know what's going on. Now, if something happened in my life that deal with the priesthood. Because they say he rightly belonged to priesthood. What happened in my life that they wanted to deny me of the priesthood? <laughs> okay. At a certain time in my life, uh, I mean, being part of Mormon Church, and when I went in there, they made certain promises. Okay, we're going to help you. Since they, you know, we had this deal, this situation going on, and just of them were saying, hey, how they gonna, how they going to deny blacks with the priesthood? But then they're getting all these tax breaks and et cetera, et cetera. So, so all of a sudden, the revelation came from Utah, okay, and said, ah, oh, it's, it's time for blacks to own the priesthood. I don't think that had nothing to do with it. It was time for it, but I think that pressure on the Mormon church caused them to release that from blacks not having a priesthood. And then they started rushing, putting blacks in the church, putting blacks in the priesthood, getting them to join the church and all that. And, uh, so that's how it came about. See, when God want to make something happen, he's going to fix a scenario. He's going to fix something to happen to make this come into play. And that's when it came into play. So in 1979 through 1972, in that area, they start bringing blacks, trying to bring blacks. And a lot of blacks didn't want to hear it. Okay. So when I came there in the Mormon church in Fort Pierce, Florida at the time, I was one of the first blacks that's in the church because they didn't want to hear it. Because I'm going to tell you something. Just because they wanted to bring blacks in the prison don't mean the racism did not still exist within the Mormon church, okay? So it was there. I know. 14 years, I know. It was there. Is it there now? I wouldn't doubt it. That deep racism that was there, whoa. They told me one time with my wife, don't go into a uh, way across me, yeah, way across Georgia. Don't go there to visit that church because we we want to let you know that anything could happen. That's how deep the racism was. Okay, but I love the individuals the same because see, people got to clean the act up anyway. Now you had some people in there were very good. Even the Mormon missionaries told me straight up, uh, Brother Armstrong, uh, we got to tell you something. Well, he said, racism is still in here, in these churches. Now, they were from the north. They are from a different area. And they went into that like the south was. And they said, uh, so when you go we, uh, you go through the baptism, you need to understand that. Say, we're not going to lie to you. We're going to tell you the truth. Because you had some women this way and some women that way. It ain't that they, someone wanted you in there, they just wanted to straighten out the thing, the stain that was on the Mormon church at that time. Okay? Now, see, y'all can't tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about, because I was there. Okay? I was in there. When you were in any organization 14 years, come on. You shouldn't know. 
and you a smart person, you should know what it is. Man, I done went in the grocery store and more than walk by me and I walk by him and I say, hey, how you doing? And although he in the church, hey, hey brother, I'm strong. Man, this, this, this person, I ain't like he ain't know who I was. That's how deep it was in there. Now, Joseph Smith, and Joseph Smith time, it wasn't like that. But it had grew to that through the years. Okay? And I'm not telling you this to whoop on them. I'm telling you this that some people could start out with the truthism from their leader. But through time, they could deviate from that. Through those generations, they could deviate from that. And God wanted to change. God wanted to change. And that's what's going on right now. God wants to change because the Son of Man got to come to the Jews as well so as the Gentiles or the Hebrews as well so as the Gentiles. And that's why I'm bringing those particular points out. Now, let's go on. Because the waster, Louis R.A., is here to destroy or get rid of that negativeness, that part that destroys unity with integrity. See, we need unity with integrity now. We need these organizations to come together. And it say, wait, 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 this other part. Deny the priesthood, say that rightly belong the priesthood. Let's deal with that part, okay? Let's deal with that, okay? The waste to, to destroy. No weapon. Okay, no weapon, no weapon, and this is thought saying, is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue, this is thought saying again, shall rise against thee in judgment. Notice what they say, in judgment, thy shall condemn. Now, where is the time of judgment? We're walking in this time of judgment right now. If you look at us talk about the year, what Revelation talk about, uh, uh, the nation, Babylon will be destroyed or changed within that uh, uh, hour, that judgment will come within that hour and the hour has got to be understood by dividing 24 hours into a thousand uh, uh, to one thousand because it said one day is like a thousand years okay, to the Lord and Peter okay, so when you look at that those 40, that judgment is those Round it all, it's 41.66 uh, uh, years, but you round it all 42 years. So in that, from 2000 to 2042, these things got to be changed. It got to be changed, okay? The Mormons got to wake up to the truthism. The Jews over in Israel and all around the world got to wake up to the truthism. And God chosen peoples among the black folks of America got to wake up to this truthism. You can't run away from truthism because what God do, God will stir things up to get you to walk in the right path. Since you don't know the path, he's going to get you into that path. And you got to see this. Let's move on, okay? This is, this is her heritage of the, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. So when Joseph Smith came on the scene, it was because God brought Joseph Smith on the scene. What did Joseph Smith say? All the churches are false. All the churches are wrong. They are doing the thing. They ain't doing it the right way. They're all wrong. When he asked, what church should I join? None of them. Okay. All of them was out of course. Okay. So Joseph Smith came and he came to do God's will. Okay. Despite the way the LDS church is today. And the other one, you have several, you have so many of them now, but the LDS is the main one. And you got to see that, and I'm going to read this again. Isaiah 54, 16 to 17. Behold, behold, I have created the smith to blow up the coals in the fire and bring forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. Okay, no weapon. Now he's talking about the waster now. No weapon, that person, Louis Armstrong, no weapon. No weapon formed against him shall prosper, and every tongue shall rise against him in judgment. Okay? In judgment. Now, it didn't say in his whole life, but in judgment. In the time of judgment, thy shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. 
and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. You got to understand that. You got to understand who is standing in front of you right now. You got to know what God is doing right now because he said this. Listen to what he said uh, here. What is the root of Jesse spoken of in the 10th verse of the 11th chapter of Isaiah? He said, Behold, thus said the Lord, it is a descendant of Jesse, telling you this is a bloodline. This person coming is a royal bloodline. It's a descendant of Jesse as well so of Joseph, unto whom rightly belong the priesthood. Now I want you to see this. Unto whom rightly belong the priesthood. You got to see this. Rightly belong the priesthood. Because this played out in history. Why I played out in history. Okay. When the Mormons had said, okay, well, we want you to help bring rights in the church so we can, and we'll help you. Notice this. Uh, we will help you so you can build up these people, which they meant the black people, like this. Okay. Now, what was that saying? What was that saying? Economically, uh, the Mormons is an economic superpower. Walmart is owned by Mormon. U-Haul is owned by Mormon. They got the largest cattle ranch in the state of Florida. Uh, Marriott is owned by Mormon. You guys go name the doors. Uh, 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 banana and all the other things owned by Mormon. Mormons are have politicians, United States senators and senators and everything, hatches, uh, 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 and uh, some of the other ones are Mormon. Uh, 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 is it uh, the Secretary of State? I think Kerry, I think Kerry is a, a Mormon as well. But you got a lot of Mormons. If I call Kerry wrong, I'm sorry, but you got a lot of Mormons in politics. One who, uh, uh, Bush, a uh, 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 campaign manager, the guy Bush in office, okay, was Mormon. So you got Mormons is playing all in him. The, the oil cartel out of Texas is Mormon. So these Mormons have a lot of power. These Mormons, if you ride by and see the Mormon churches in different areas, and just look in your phone, it used to be a phone book, but look in your directory on Mormon churches and stuff like that, you see them all over. I mean, they own, and they own large uh, parcels of land, etc. Okay? And you got to see the wealth that these peoples have, okay? And how they have accumulated all this wealth. So you got to know that that God had permitted them to do this, okay? Now, and some people say, well, they're tied in with the Catholics now, and they're tied in with the CIA now because we look back, Aristotle had kicked the Mormons out of Haiti at one time because he said they was CIA, okay? So you got to see the Mormons are involved in a lot of different stuff, okay? A lot of things right now, and you got to see that. But it say rightly belong the priesthood. So why would it say that? Rightly, he rightly belong the priesthood. Because somewhere in his life, it's going to come where they will want to deny him of the priesthood. Okay. What happened for them to want to deny him of his priesthood? Okay. Back in Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Florida, the charter was brought up. Putting them to the test. Say, okay, you say you're going to help these people now. This thing by you know, Jesse Jackson brought up that y'all not letting blacks hold the priesthood. Now blacks hold the priesthood. Some and and this, the, the the thought of it and all that had faded away. So what it is when I step to him and say, well, hey, look, this chart is here. Hebrew Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. This chart is here, and I like y'all to help me bring blacks into this kind of environment because. They said, if they hadn't said it, maybe I would have never went to the Mormon church, okay? But yet I was looking to understand the priesthood more, and I didn't have the knowledge that I have now about thought and etc. So, but I understood that there was something about the priesthood I had to understand. And so when I stepped to them, and they said, well, if you, if we let you start this organization, with this charter and start this organization, then there'll be two prophets. And we can't have two prophets. That's what came to me. Okay. I said, well, y'all, are you losing all the members that we're bringing to the church because you're not able to keep them because they see the racism. They see all this and, and they're not regular to mingle with you in that way because you're not being just with these people 
and we need to be able to build an organization separate from what you got, but yet to serve the same purpose. They weren't in it. And so Miami Harrow had covered, was going to cover the story, went to take photos, shots, and all that. First black Mormon church in the United States, going to be started, da 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 da. And they told Miami Harrow, you write that. And this is what came to me, okay? This is what the Miami Herald reporter said to me. They said, if you run that, uh, you run that article about him being starting the first black woman church in America, you're gonna have our lawyers down there and we're gonna sue you. That's what point it got to. And they said, we can't run this story. We can't run this story. And for a while, I said certain things, other things, Curry, I ain't want to talk about. Okay. So I don't want to put a bad blemish on them, but I know that this is scripture here. And I want you to know that this scripture was being fulfilled in my life, being in that environment at the time. But anyway, long story short, during the time when before, I think before the excommunication that they called, putting there in front, the prophet that they had died. Okay, he died, but I was still living. Okay, so who is the real prophet? He gone. I know though they signed or nothing, but I was still in the gap. And I'm still here today. And I'm that one in the scripture. So what you gonna do? Because God, and I didn't reach that point, that place where I need to be, anoint the most holy. So you know, I'm going to say it like that. But it's still, but I'm not coming here to knock them. Oh, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because there's some true peoples in that organization. There's some God-loving, God-fearing peoples in that organization. And they are part of the hope. They are part of the ones, the Gentiles, that I have to be a light to as well. So I'm not here to knock them. I'm just here to show you scripture fulfilling itself. And you need to know that. Now, it's going down. That's uh that's that's it for now. This I say this lecture will not be that long. I'm trying to make it short. But I try to show you a truthism that that God is dealing in different ways that you don't know. And God been dealing with the Mormon organization as well. Okay. In the area of Utah, Utah, when you look at the uh, area of uh, ancient Egypt, the Egypt over here, it goes all the way up in that area over there. But the area that God want to start building for his chosen peoples is the area of the fur crescent, the area that Joseph, that it talk about, Joshua talk about. With sole of thy boot, thy, thy foot, which is an anagram for boot is, and that's Florida in Florida, that Fertile Crescent, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, okay, Texas and all that. That's part of this new land that God is going to build for his chosen people. And you got to see that. Now, thank you for being able to sit here patiently and listen to me talk and say some things that was kind of personal as well. But yet, I don't want nobody to think that the Mormon church is not, you know, they, they just like any other church at this time. And you got to realize, Joseph Smith been off the scene a long time. So a lot of stuff have creeped in. But overall, I would say that God could still use those people because some of Joseph Smith's bloodline is still in that environment. And I'm not here to to downgrade any of that. I'm trying to tell you that God is going to be God. And if God send you a messenger after Joseph Smith that you're supposed to look at and post embrace, then you got to do that if you're following the true God. And you're following the God of this Bible. And that's all I'm trying to say to you. Now, you can make your donations. Here, we're still looking for that 10 people with the 100K and others, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, etc. We're looking for them. 
Because we need to build this organization. You can make your donations to Louis Armstrong Ministry, 7536 Jane Elaine North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210, across Rock with that same address. Or you can go across Rock on, on your mobile app, Give Lafay, on the mobile app, on the charitable. Or you can go with PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Also, Cash App at dollar sign SWAU1954. That's Cash App, dollar sign SWAU1954. And I know it's Christmas time and the holidays, but we need you guys to please help back this organization. Help push this so we can take this to another level. It's very important because we have a lot of viewers and we have very few uh, ones that are reaching in their pocket and doing what they does say the Lord. So please, if you're going to be ones that watch this organization, please back the organization. Help sponsor the growth of this organization. We will truly appreciate it. And don't forget uh, to, you'll see it on, on there, on the video, talk about Sister Corinthia on this this program that she have come on back it come to the come there and ask questions and listen to the lesson that she have because it's always stuff you're going to learn okay and you can ask many questions from me at the same time so sometime i'm going to be there and in the beginning part i'm going to be there constantly there to help this build help this grow like i said prayer heavenly father thank you for permitting us to be here heavenly father Thank you for giving us the knowledge that you have given us so we can understand our pathway. We can understand ourselves and our growth. Heavenly Father, thank you for God the Almighty, the source, Allah, and the Savior, Lord God, thought, and his messenger. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all the individuals that listen to this. Thank you for all the individuals that you have put connected to this organization. Heavenly Father, please bless their life and bless all our life that we'll be able to be stronger in you. And we say this in the name of the Lord God, though, and God the Almighty, Allah.